a three-part success recipe that I discovered from a three-foot chef. Hi, I'm Timothy Paulson, and this is the Totalityism Podcast, episode number 10. This podcast is all about helping you become everything that God created you to be. It's about merging art and theology in such a way where it comes to life with principles to help you go to the next level. Now to the recipe. It has nothing to do with food. It's a powerful recipe for avoiding failure while enjoying greater success in life and becoming everything that God created you to be. Now, I was not handed this recipe by the three-foot chef or anyone else. I discovered it in an unusual way, while painting a portrait of my friend, Dr. Sean Stevenson. The success recipe was hidden right in my own art. Edwin Catmull said this, Art isn't about drawing. It's about learning to see. To that quote, I add, At the heart of art is learning to to listen. Now, I know it sounds a bit funny, but I'm an art whisperer. I'm an artist. I paint pictures, and I often gain insights on success principles from my art. To illustrate this a little bit, Ernst Gombrich, he's an art historian, he said this, one never finishes learning about art. There are always new things to discover. Great works of art seem to look different every time one stands before them. They seem as inexhaustible and unpredictable as real human beings, end quote. I have for several years been thinking about discovering and collecting success principles that I've discovered from creating art. It, in fact, excites me every time I pick up a paintbrush to paint because I know I'm on the path to discovering something new. As a matter of fact, I just finished a painting of Johnny Cash. And as I painted that, I discovered success principles that I will share in a future podcast episode. I merge the success principles that I discover with theology in a unique way in the new art movement of the 21st century. I call it totalityism. I'll talk more about that in a minute. It was as I painted the portrait of the three-foot chef that the three-part life success recipe I'm about to share with you came together for me. Now, let's start with who this three-foot chef is. His name was Sean Stevenson, and he was indeed three feet tall. Sadly, Sean died after an accident on August 28, 2019, at the age of 40. I'm doing this podcast episode because it is three years after the death of Sean. I flew to Arizona to attend the funeral It was actually a celebration of Sean's life. There I met his wonderful parents, Gloria and Greg, and it was a remarkable event. Now, Sean was known as the three-foot giant because he was such a remarkable man in a small package. Jimmy Kimmel, host of the ABC Jimmy Kimmel Live show, he said this, Sean Stevenson is the Yoda of personal development with less pointy ears. Now, Sean wasn't really a chef, but several years ago, he did several very funny episodes of an online show he titled The Three Foot Chef. Sean had all kinds of fun on his show as he and his guests made big messes in the kitchen. His ability to laugh at himself on the show and in life was absolutely amazing. Here are some facts about Sean. He was born with osteogenesis imperfecta commonly called brittle bone disorder. He had hundreds of broken bones through his life. In spite of being in a wheelchair his entire life, he was one of the happiest people I've ever known. He was married to Mindy Kniss. He earned a PhD, so he was known as Dr. Sean Stevenson. He was a world-class speaker, one of the very best speakers I've ever heard. He was an author. One of the books he wrote is Get Off Your Butt, spelled B-U-T. That meant get off your excuses. But I can't do it. But I can't do it. No, get off those excuses. He worked in the Clinton White House. He was the subject of a TV show titled The Three-Foot Giant. He was followed and loved by millions of Facebook fans around the world. Sean spoke and wrote on the subject of success for over 23 years. 
Now, you can see the portrait that reveals the three-part recipe on my website. Go to PaulsonArtShow.com. Scroll down, and you'll see Sean wearing a chef's hat sitting in a wheelchair. He has a serious look on his face in this painting. I took the photo at a Genius Network meeting led by Joe Polish. That's where I met Sean Stevenson originally. Sean was always smiling. He was posing for photographs. But when I took a photograph of him, he took a serious pose. Wearing a chef's hat because he was doing the Three Foot Chef series at the time. I love the combination. Sean was serious about those things that were most important. And he also had fun. Now, again, this is the Totalityism podcast, Totalityism. It's the new art movement of the 21st century. I've spoken about that before. It's about merging art and theology, where I merge art, ideas, and principles that I find in the art with theology in a way to help people become everything God created them to be. The life success recipe Sean Stevenson's portrait revealed to me consists of three of my core totalityism principles. The success recipe part one, it revolves around the private museum principle. Now, if you were to be in my art studio and my art gallery, and again, you can see it online, you'll see a lot of photos. I like to paint portraits of people I admire. So you can see in the online gallery photos of my portraits of the Beatles, Muhammad Ali, Marilyn Monroe, Steph Curry, Michael Jordan, Jimi Hendrix, Johnny Cash, Sean Stevenson, and others. Now, Sean's portrait sits among some of the most famous people who've ever lived. Is he in the same category as the Beatles, as Marilyn Monroe, as Michael Jordan? To me, absolutely yes. As the photos you'll see in my studio show, Sean mixes in seamlessly with some of the greatest of all time. In my book, Totality X, The Art of Becoming All God Created You to Be, chapter one is titled The Private Museum Principle. To introduce it here, imagine you saw my painting of Sean in the Louvre in Paris, or perhaps in the Museum of Modern Art in New York City, or in some other famous venue. How would you feel about the painting of Sean then? The painting would be honored. It would be greatly appreciated and appreciated in value because of where it is and the company it keeps. On the other hand, let's say somehow the Mona Lisa could be smuggled out of the Louvre and placed on the wall of a diner somewhere. People would not give it a second look because they would assume it was just a cheap copy. So I'm talking about the same paintings, different venues, different value, different appreciation. So just as a painting put into the right environment becomes more valuable, when we put ourselves and others into an honored and respected state that's mentally and or physically, things change. In my physical art gallery, I have a painting displayed in a private room all by itself. I have a crowd control rope in front of it to protect it from visitors. There's special lighting and a security camera in the room as well. Again, the painting is titled Rise from the Dust, and it's priced at $1 million. Now, what painting do you suppose attracts the most attention from visitors to my art gallery? You're right. It's Rise from the Dust. Visitors want to know all about it. They look closely. They admire it. And they want to spend time with it. It's what they talk about to friends after they visit my art gallery. Now, here's the rest of the story with this painting. Several years ago, I purchased an old dusty painting at a yard sale for $7. It was a black and white landscape that I transformed into a colorful abstract painting. That $7 yard sale painting became the $1 million Rise from the Dust painting that you see at PaulsonArtShow.com. Now, I share that, and I've shared that in other podcast episodes as well, but to illustrate this principle. I didn't wait for someone else to come along and proclaim the piece of art as a $1 million painting. I did that myself after transforming it. It was natural for me to do after I put it into the private museum-like state in its own room in the gallery, honored, revered, and respected. So how does this apply to you? 
You can do the same thing with yourself, with your marriage, with your family, with your work, with your business, with your health, and so forth. For example, if you were to honor and revere your marriage and your relationships as priceless, how will you act differently? How will you treat others? If you were to treat your business, your career, and your clients as if they are invaluable, what will you do differently? If you were to treat yourself as if you were a remarkable piece of art, what would you change about how you take care of yourself? How would you eat and drink differently? How often would you exercise? How much more would you sleep? What would you fill your mind with? So merging this concept, private museum principle, with theology, you are a beloved child of God. This puts you into what I call the private museum of eternal greatness. Here's a great quote from Sean. What I discovered shocked me. In fact, we become exactly like those we hang out with most. When you place yourself in an environment, you eventually become the environment. It's inevitable. End quote. Here's what I want to emphasize. Just like Sean, you belong in the company of the great ones. Sean welcomed himself into the presence of greatness, not out of ego, but out of high self-worth. He belonged because he made up his mind he belonged, and you can belong too. Now, I observed Sean for years. He was comfortable anywhere, whether it was in the presence of the President of the United States or the Dalai Lama, or iconic billionaires, or in speaking in front of an audience of thousands of people, or as a funny chef making a mess as he cooked before an online audience, he always felt at home. When I look at my portrait of Sean, I get the feeling that he's inviting and welcoming you and me onto a higher plane with him. Part one of the recipe is this, the private museum principle. Value yourself more. Value your relationships more. Value your health more. Value your business or your career more. Picture and welcome yourself side by side with the great ones and realize you belong right there with them. Remember that you are a beloved child of God and you have a great eternal worth. And through Christ, no matter how low in the dust you ever find yourself, he can raise you up. Rise from the dust. Okay, success recipe part two, the love and grow rich principle. Everyone loved Sean. I witnessed people eagerly gathering around him at live events. He was always one of the most popular people in the room. And he got well-deserved standing ovations when he spoke around the world. As I painted Sean's portrait, stroke by stroke, I felt an incredible love for him. As much as any painting I've done, I I wanted to do a great job on this one because of the love I feel for Sean. More than once, I stepped away from the painting and I said to myself, I sure love this guy. As I painted Sean's eyes and the sparkle in them, I discovered why I and so many others feel such a strong love for Sean. Here it is. It's because Sean loved others first. Whoa, that's it. Sean enjoyed life's riches because he loved others first. I went online to search Sean quotes. I found the following that is congruent with what I feel about his portrait. He said, I love everyone. Why? The moment I dislike someone, they own me. They own my energy, thoughts, feelings, etc. He also said, find people who love you unconditionally, surround yourself with them, and bring them the same level of intensity. Now, Sean led with love for others and found and surrounded himself with people who loved him unconditionally. I am definitely included in that group. Now, here's a higher source that reinforces this principle. From the New Testament, 1 John 4.19, we love him because he first loved us. I've written and spoken around the world about the power of love. In my book, Totality X, chapter 15 is titled, The Love and Grow Rich Principle. And guess what? It features my painting of Sean and a chapter about him. There are various aspects to the Love and Grow Rich Principle. The thoughts and feelings I had while painting Sean's portrait illuminated one of them. There's great power in loving others first. Emmett Fox said, If you could only love enough, you could be the most powerful person in the world. 
Again, Sean was an amazing speaker. But there are other great speakers in the world. He was a terrific personal development author. But there are many other fine authors out there. What separated Sean from the others? He loved his audience first. He loved people first. He loved me first. He loved you first. So this begs the question, how can you love others first? First of all, can you see how you can enjoy more success in life by loving others first, as Sean did? Here's what really works well for me. I ask myself this simple question when meeting someone. What is it about this person that I love? I remember when I was about to speak to an audience in Cairo, Egypt. It was a large seminar there, and I had the opportunity to be there. I don't usually feel nervous when I speak at seminars, but I did in Egypt. Nervousness fled, however, when I asked and answered the following question. I was off the stage ready to go on, and I asked myself this question in my mind. Why do I love the people in this audience? There's a Cameroon proverb that says, He who asketh the question cannot avoid the answer. Another quote is, Whatever you focus on expands. When you ask yourself a question such as, Why do I love this person? Your mind is forced to answer it, and the answers come. When I was in Cairo, I asked myself that question, and the answers came. When I stepped onto the stage, I was full of love. I was excited to be there, and the audience felt that. John 15, 9 and 10. As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. So part two of the recipe is the love and grow rich principle, love others first. That's what Sean Stevenson did. That's what we should do. Now the success recipe, part three, the perfect imperfection principle. As I painted the portrait of Sean, I thought for a minute about not including the wheelchair in the painting. Thankfully, I quickly realized the error in that thinking. The wheelchair is an important part of who Sean was. Sean's imperfections made him unique, one of a kind, and inspiring. He was perfectly Sean Stevenson. There is no one else quite like him. He's perfectly imperfect, just like you and I are. One of the principles I advance in Totality X is called the Perfect Imperfection Principle. I originally discovered and named it after I painted the four images of the beetles around the perimeter of, the, of a tree stump I rescued from a campfire in Utah several years ago. The piece of art is called the Beatles Sculpture. Again, you can go to paulsonartshow.com. You can scroll down and see the picture of the Beatles Sculpture. John and Paul and Ringo and George. As you look at the piece of art, you'll see what I'm about to describe. As I created the piece, I saw that the wood had all kinds of cracks and blemishes and imperfections, which bothered me at first because it was so imperfect. But I thought better of it. I soon realized the imperfections actually make the piece more beautiful and one of a kind. The Beatles sculpture is totally amazing in great part because of its blemishes and flaws. Sean was perfectly imperfect. He accepted what he couldn't change, and he worked to improve in areas that he could. Sean's mother, Gloria, asked him after Sean broke his femur when he was in fourth grade, Sean, is this going to be a gift or a burden? She added, Sean, pain is inevitable. Eventually, it touches all of us. Suffering, however, is optional. I borrow and adapt from the wisdom of Sean's mother to share this. Imperfection is inevitable. Is it going to be a gift or a burden? Sean transformed imperfection into his gift. Will you do the same? You and I, we have flaws and are imperfect. Your career, your business, they're not perfect. Your spouse, your kids, your friends, they're imperfect. If you truly want to avoid failure and enjoy greater success in all aspects of life, if you want to continue down that path to become all that God created you to be, remember this painting of Sean and look at imperfection differently. As if it's a gift that adds to the uniqueness and beauty in your life. Don't hide the imperfection. Embrace it, just like Sean Stevenson did.
I love this verse from 2 Corinthians 12, 9 and 10. But he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. For the sake of Christ, then, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Part three of the recipe is the perfect imperfection principle. Celebrate your imperfections. Recognize they make you completely unique, one of a kind. You are perfectly imperfect. So let me summarize at the conclusion of this episode the three-part life success recipe. Number one, the private museum principle. Value yourself more. Value your relationships more. Value your health more. Value your business or career more. Picture and welcome yourself side by side with the great ones and realize you belong right there with them, for you are a beloved child of God. Number two, the love and grow rich principle, love first. And number three, the perfect imperfection principle, celebrate your imperfections, recognize they make you completely unique, one of a kind, you are perfectly imperfect. Can you see how this recipe can be valuable to you. Einstein, he said, anyone can know, the point is to understand. I invite you to deeply consider these things. In order to understand all I've shared in this episode, implement the recipe. I do have a resource for you. I will send you a cheat sheet. I'll email it to you. All you need to do is email me at timothypulson1 at gmail.com and request the implementation cheat sheet. I'm glad you joined me for this episode. I miss Sean Stevenson. I love Sean Stevenson. Three years have passed and there has been a void, but I will always remember him. And I will always remember, I will never forget, I will never forget the three-part success recipe that I discovered from this wonderful man, the three-foot chef, the three-foot giant.